Hi there. On this video, I will cover multi-level feedback queuing. All right. So this requires knowledge on the basic CPU scheduling, like first come first serve, round robin, short job first, and priority scheduling. Okay. So let's start. Now let us define a multi-level feedback queuing. Okay. So, in a multi-level feedback queuing, this basically combines several algorithms. Okay, so the first six algorithms, which are first come, first serve, short job, first preemptive and non-preemptive, priority preemptive and non-preemptive, and round robin are being used. Okay, so on a multi-level feedback queuing. All right, so a process can move between various queues and aging can be implemented that way all right so on a multi-level feedback queuing okay so the multi-level feedback queue scheduler defined by the following parameters so you've got the number of queues the scheduling algorithms for each of the queue the method used to determine when to upgrade the process when to demote the process and the method used to determine which queue a process will enter when that process needs service all right now referring to this diagram here okay so we have here three different queues all right so you've got q1 q2 and q3 all right so these queues are operating based on the priority so processes on q1 will be the highest priority process on q2 is next and processes on q3 will be the lowest priority all right now considering that on q1 we will be using a round robin same thing with q2 so round robin quantum of one and q1 and round robin quantum of two on q2 and on q3 we will be using the first come first serve all right so one implementation of a multi-level feedback queuing is given first all right so when a process starts executing then it first enters into a q1 all right so whenever we have a process that would go to q1 for execution and in this example q1 uses a round robin quantum of one all right now second in q1 process executes for one unit and if it completes in one unit or it gives CPU for I.O. operation in this one unit, then the priority of this process does not change. And if it again comes in the ready queue, then it again starts its execution on Q1. All right. So that thing is also applicable for Q2. All right. So if a process in Q1 does not complete in one millisecond, then its priority gets reduced and it's shifted to Q2. So all processes that was not able to complete the execution on Q1 will be moved and shifted to the next queue. All right. Same thing, if there are processes that was not able to complete the execution on Q2, then it will be shifted to Q3. All right. So the above points, okay, so what happened on Q1 is also the event that might happen on Q2, all right? So again, if the process was not able to finish on Q1, it will move on Q2, and from Q2, it will move on Q3. So in a general case, if a process does not complete in a time quantum, then it is shifted to a lower priority queue, all right? So in the last queue, Processes are scheduled in the first come, first serve manner, considering again the priority here. All right. So next, a process in a lower priority queue can only be executed only when the higher priority queues are empty. So that means we cannot start Q2 unless there are processes or there is still at least one process on Q1 running. And we cannot execute Q3, all right, which runs in first come first serve if there are processes currently being executed on Q2. All right. 
So a process running in a lower priority queue is interrupted by a process arriving in the higher priority queue. All right? So remember that a process running in the lower priority queue is interrupted by a process arriving in the higher priority queue. Okay? So well, the above implementation may differ. For example, the last queue can also follow a round robin scheduling. So there is a possibility that the third queue also uses a round robin uh, round robin scheduling. So this queue can use any of the six basic algorithm that we have studied on CPU scheduling. All right? Next. So problems in the above implementation. So a process in the lower priority queue can suffer from starvation due to some short processes taking all in the CPU. All right, so there are processes that taking the time of the CPU and the rest of the processes that is in the lower priority queue, well, it has to long it, it has to wait for a very long time and we call it starvation. All right? So what is our solution to this? So a simple solution can be to boost the priority of all the processes after a regular intervals and place them all in the highest priority queue. All right? So that's the solution. Okay? So what is the need of such complex scheduling? First, it is more flexible than the multi-level queuing scheduling. All right? So to optimize the turnaround time algorithms like short job first is needed. Okay? So that is requiring the running time of a process to be scheduled. But the running time of the process is not known in advance, right? So the multi-level feedback queuing runs a process for a time quantum and then it can change its priority if it is a long process. So thus it learns from past behavior of the process and then predicts its future behavior. So this way, it tries to run shorter process First, thus optimizing the turnaround time. All right? So the multi-level feedback queuing also reduces the response time. Now, so I have here an example of the multi-level feedback queuing without the predefined condition. All right? So let's, let's run this uh, four processes here. Okay, given these four processes, the arrival time, the burst time, and the priority. All right? So the first priority here is P4. Second is 2. Okay? P3. Third is P2. And the fourth priority here is P1. All right? So we are going to consider on Q1, we will be using round robin quantum of 1. All right? On Q2, we will be using round robin quantum of 2. And on Q3, we will be using first come, first serve. All right? So at time zero, I have here an illustration, okay? So I want you to observe the time there for every tick of a time, all right? So an event is happening here, all right? So at time zero, from the uh, given, it's process one who is in the red queue. Only process 1 is in the red queue at time 0. Alright? And this process requires 7 milliseconds of burst time. Okay? So, at time 0, process 1 is in the red queue of queue number 1. And it will be implemented using round robin quantum of 1. Alright? So, let's start. So, at time 0, P1 is there. Okay? So, this P1 will be moved to... Q1 on the CPU for execution. And it will be given a quantum of 1, right? So we have here a quantum, okay? Initially it's set to 1 because the quantum here is 1 and it expires when it gets 0, all right? So when it gets 0, okay? So that means process 1 has finished the execution after 1 millisecond. So in here, at time 1, currently P1 is executed. So executing one millisecond, so therefore, we are um, we have executed 
1 millisecond of the burst time for P1. And therefore, at 1 millisecond, it will be preempted. All right? And therefore, since P1 was not able to finish the execution, okay, so therefore, it will fall in line on Q2. All right? So P1 would be the first process to be in the ready queue, okay, so for a round robin quantum of 2. All right? So after one millisecond, we only have one process that was executed under round robin quantum of 1 in Q1. All right? So what will happen is this P1 here will continue its operation or execution, okay, until the time quantum here of 2 milliseconds expires. All right? So each process on the Q2 will be given 2 milliseconds quantum. All right? So at time 1, only P1, the only process in the Q, and is now currently being executed until this quantum time 2 here gets 0 and expired. All right? Now, during the execution of P1, okay, on Q2, so at time zero, uh, at time two, process two already came in the ready queue. And process two needs four milliseconds here. All right? So that is at time two, and we still have one millisecond remaining for the quantum for P1. All right? Next, at time three, Okay, so P1 was able to execute uh, 2 milliseconds of the burst time, and therefore, at time 3, it will be terminated and preempted, all right, and moved to the first come, first serve ready queue. All right, so that means after 3 milliseconds, so process 1 has moved on the ready queue for the Q3, and it has a remaining of 4 milliseconds quantum. Ah, uh, 4 milliseconds uh, burst time. Alright? Next. So, take note that during the execution of P1 here, okay, so P2 was already on the ready queue. So, um, therefore, P2 has make it, or P2 has make it on the Q2, right? So, um, P2, which is the third priority, will be executed for... 2 milliseconds quantum, right? So at time 3, at time 4, until this quantum gets 0, at time 5, right? So therefore, P2 will, was executed for 2 milliseconds, all right? Now, after 5 milliseconds, we still have two processes on the queue. So that means P3 and P4 has made it, on the second algorithm or on Q2, all right? Now, who will be executed first? P4 here is the highest priority. So we give the execution, okay, so to P4. So P4 will be given also two milliseconds quantum, all right? Next, at time five, so P2 has finished the execution, right? And therefore, we'll join P1 on the ready queue for the first come first serve. All right. Next, P4 will be given two milliseconds here, quantum. Okay. So and therefore that will end up at seven milliseconds. All right. So after seven milliseconds, P2 has remaining two milliseconds burst time. And therefore. This P4 here will move on the ready queue for the first come first serve. And eventually, right, so this will rearrange based on the priority. So take note that on Q3, we are not yet, or we have not yet started here because we are not yet done with Q2. All right. So we still have a process. So we still have P3 as a process on Q2. All right. And P3 needs one millisecond there. So um, it is now currently being executed and was able to um, deduct one millisecond from its burst time. Okay? So that means after one millisecond, 
P3 was the only process who has completed execution. So, and it has completed on a Q2. So that means after P3 has been terminated, okay, so we are now ready to start Q3. And on Q3, there were already three processes on the queue. All right, so that was uh, P1, P2, and P4. Okay, so what will happen here is, so we need to implement a priority first come, first serve, all right? Because we do have the priority there, all right? So P4 has a remaining two, okay? So that means after 10 milliseconds, so P4 has already completed its execution, all right? So we still have P2 on the queue. So after 12 milliseconds, so P2 has completed the execution. And the last one would be P1 with 4. Alright, so that will end up the execution at 16. Alright, so this is our gun chart. So that means P4, P2, and P1 here, the remaining burst time was executed on algorithm number 3 or on Q3. So this is Q1, Q2, and Q3. All right, so it's time to get now the table. All right, let's derive the table from the gun chart. Let's start with the turnaround time here. All right, so P1 has finished 16 minus the arrival time zero. So that's still 16. All right, next, process two has finished the execution at 12 minus two, that's 10. All right. So process 3 has finished the execution at 8 minus uh, 4, so that would be 4. And process 4 has finished the execution at 10, right? So 10 minus 5, that's still 5. Alright? So the total would be, so added, that's 35 divided by 4, that's 8.75 milliseconds. Alright? Now for the waiting time, so initially, P1 never waited here, but it was preempted at 3 and resumed its operation on 12. So 12 minus 3 here, all right, so that would be 9. Okay? So for process 2, it has waited here 3, preempted at 5, resume at 10, 10 minus 5, that's 5, plus 3 here, initial waiting time, so that would be 8. Minus 2 arrival time, so that would be 6. Alright? Next. For P3, it has waited 7 milliseconds here. So 7 minus 4, that's 3. And for P4, it has waited here 8 milliseconds. Right? So initially, it has waited here 5. Preempted at 7, resumes at 8. So we've got 1 here. Right? Plus 1. That's 6 minus 5, that's 1. So total is 19 divided by 4, you've got 4.75 milliseconds. Alright? So that's it for the multi-level feedback queuing. Thank you for watching.